to advertise it, Frieden made a set of playing cards. Where, of course, you know, they'd be ordinary cards on the back. The hypermodern Frieden 130, Frieden 132 calculator on the back of the cards. This calculator cost as much as a new car, more expensive than most new cars in 1963, and it sold a quarter million, maybe 300,000 of them. There were assembly lines going three shifts in the mid-60s. Frieden was making barrels of money. Where's Frieden today? They had the idea that calculators forever would be big 40-pound beasts and that they had the monopoly. Nobody else could make these. Didn't take long before Sharp, before Sony, before lots of other companies started making littler, smaller, and smaller calculators. Instead of costing 3000 they cost 1000 each. $400 each, 100 bucks each, 50 bucks each, $10 each. Where is Frieden today? A memory. Now, I'll put it back together and I'll show you what astonishes and impresses me, even today, that, that an engineer who's designing acoustic line memory, a guy who's, who's figuring out how to put numbers on an oscilloscope screen, a, a, a guy who's figuring out, in 1963, this astonishingly advanced calculator, takes one absolutely cool step forward. Let me put this together. Oh. The cool thing, as you look across this keyboard, oh, there's 10 digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. No problem. There's add, subtract, multiply, divide, and square root. What there is not is a parenthesis. What happens if I want to add 2 plus 3 times 5? Uh, how do I do it? Bob Reagan, this engineer who designed this, and fought within the company to, to, to get it to happen. He had studied under Louis Alvarez. Bob Reagan had studied physics. He'd studied math. He was introduced to the ideas of Jan Lukasiewicz. Jan Lukasiewicz, my Polish isn't very good, was the inventor of Polish notation. This Polish logician in 1925 said, there is a way to represent equations without parentheses. And instead of saying 2 plus 3, oh, put that in a parentheses, then multiply by 5, you could instead make it each operator cause something to happen. Like when you pushed add, it would take whatever's just happened and add them together. Bob Reagan, along with other engineers, I'm sure at the time, said, let's reverse this around into something called reverse Polish notation. This means that when I enter a number to add, I can write 2, enter, 3, oh, 2, I'll add, plus. 2, enter, 3, plus means 2 plus 3. Two Enter, three, enter, five times is going to be three times five plus two. Oh, okay. It's an elegant, simple, and just sweet way of representing ordinary arithmetic invented in Warsaw by Jan, Jan Lukashevitz. Implemented in transistorized logic. In 1963, by Bob Reagan, to, to, to touch this, to touch this keyboard is to reach into logic going back today, almost a century. That costs $3,500 as much as a car. What's one of these things worth now? What's it worth? <laughs> Where's a calculator? Where's a calculator here? Surely there's... Where is it? What's on my desk? Okay, 55 years ago, this cost as much as a car. Today, oh, uh, 
I can get a calculator, not reverse Polish notation, but a calculator, what, for a dollar or two? Uh, you can pick them up at used calculator stores. Do they even exist? Uh, you can get them for, for, for next to nothing. Uh, how much does this cost? I don't know. Someplace on eBay, somebody is selling one. A working Frieden calculator, I know I've put days of free time, maybe weeks of time, into getting one of these, well, both of them to work. So a working one of these represents a week or two of somebody's time. A uh, non-working one, uh, go buy a, if you want a working calculator, go to your five and dime store and spend, spend a dollar and get one of these. This is add-on to how did the Frieden memory really work? Well, I said, oh, there's acoustic waves going across this memory line. So if, if what I think I said a few months ago when Brady filmed this is there was a coil of piano steel. Well, if you uncoil that, if I remember right, I probably said, oh, there's acoustic waves going up and down on it. Each bit was a wave going across this way. No, it wasn't quite that simple. More interesting, Bob Reagan, when he designed it, made torsional waves in that stainless steel, in that stainless steel piece of piano wire. So rather than plucking the wire like this, plunk, and having a wave go that way, he twisted the wire. Each bit would twist the wire and untwist it. So each bit would twist the wire, plunk, plank, plink, plank, plink, plank, plink, plank. And as those twists propagated down the wire at the far end, the receiver would go plunk, plank, plunk, plank, plunk, plank. At this end, at the sending, at the transmitting side, the little speaker, of the voice coil of the speaker that pushed it, plunk, plank, plunk, plank, bit goes down the wire, a few dozen milliseconds later, it gets to the other end and it goes plink. Plank, plink, plank, it, those were the bits. So it wasn't exactly an acoustic wave. I think, I think engineers would call it a, a torsional wave, but what the heck, close enough. We now have uh, uh, the same, exactly the same calculator that does all exactly the same things, except it is surrounded by a pink face. At, at last, a, a calculator that caters to people who like the color pink. But I know what some of you are thinking, wait a minute, this, this, this is a little bit sexist. How on earth could you have a pink calculator and, and no other colors? Well, that's fine. Anyone who thinks that's too sexist, they do, of course, have a blue calculator.